morning. Now let's see. I'm coming from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7. It's some good stuff up in here and let us grow in the knowledge and the wisdom and the faith so we can do everything God had promised to accomplish through us. He's going to make the He's going to set it up and he just needs us to join in. He said, I'm not going to do it all. But I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to show you who you are because I made you just like me. So here we are in Deuteronomy chapter 7. And Father, we thank you this morning that we have come before your presence to understand your wisdom. That we don't get none of my opinion, none of what I... Just, just, just you be God. And, and just let's make us, get us, show us how to... To, to get into this word and become more and more like you. Make the, the Father, thank you for making this word so attractive. And thank you for your understanding. Just watch, just watch God make life better because he just going to nourish and nourish and nourish and nourish until you become just like him. Hey, Leo. I see somebody named Leo. Anyway, and Lord, thank you for forgiving sins and help me to forgive those who have sinned against me. Help me to practice being like you. I can't holler away to get in this word. And Lord, let every word that comes out of my mouth express your heart and mind for the people that are listening. And Lord, thank you for the leaders of our churches and our country that they will find this word to be all we Father, to be just what you said, everything. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 7. I would not trust me. I'll go get my Bible, and I'll see if what I'm saying is written. Because, hey, I'm going to keep reading. Because he's doing some things in my life that I do. Hey, keep doing it, Lord. Thank you for your protection, your angels. And it's kind of sprinkling out here. Look, mm, beautiful. As long as don't do too much. <laughs> All right, now here's Moses right outside of the promised land. Moses had been walking with these people for 40 years. Just think about it, if you had a son that's 40 years old and you watched him grow. But Moses was, Moses was not going on vacations and he didn't separate himself. He was with these people every day for 40 years. And he can't even get into the promised land. But he, he still got to march on to what God said, do and then. And God said, okay, go. All right, Moses, I'm done. And he's still standing out here giving instructions to these people that he have known. They have talked about him. They have criticized him. And then some were obedient. Not everybody did him like that. Some people were really they understood. He went through a lot. And he said, for your sake, I can't even go to the promised land. But I got to obey God. All right, here we are. And Moses is so serious. You know, when I read this right here, because you're getting ready to go in, you got to grow up to read what we're getting ready to read now. When I read this, you know how um, we don't like to say the other side. In other words, we don't we like the pros. We don't want to hear the cons. And our ears have been trained to just give me what the good part. Don't give me the part that ain't no good. Just give me the cornbread that I can taste. I don't want to go through the process of the cooking and and if it burned up, just show me what the final outcome is. That's what we want. But God is saying, if I don't tell you the truth, then I'm not God. If I don't tell you your your options, then I'm not God. So today we're gonna to hear God's options. And it's going to be up to make that decision. Moses said, all the commandments which I command you this day, shall you observe. He said, everything that I'm telling you, pay attention to it. To do. Not just look at it. Mm, I think I'm going to just pay. I'm, I'm listening. He said, observe to do. That you may live. 
and do what? And multiply. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. He said, everything that I'm telling you to do, it is for your good so that you can live. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God led you these 40 years in the wilderness. He said, I've been with y'all for 40 years. Remember what we've been through. The road wasn't easy. But we are here now. But please know, we got to pay attention to what God said. He said, well, he said you were led like this to humble you and to let you see what you're all about to prove you, to know what was in your heart. God said, I'm going to take you and I'm going to find out what's in you. Once I get you 40 years, I ought to know you by now. And I want you to know yourself. I want to honor you, to prove you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandment or no. I'm telling you, if some people lost their heads, and I mean literally, click lost their heads on people that the ground unzipped and swallowed up. He said, I, 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 let me tell y'all, y'all are something else. You are something else. You stood this ground. Y'all made it for 40 years. You finally made it and you right outside of what God promised over 400 years ago when he told Abraham, I'm going to do this. And y'all are the one that made it. That's the good part. You made it. 40 years you walked. You hungered. You complained. You learned how to, to wash yourself up when somebody died. You had to keep going when, when your relative died, when your mama died. And you made y'all some soldiers, Lord. Moses said, my God, don't you forget who you are. This ain't no joke. You know a lot. You are going to be the people that God getting ready to change the entire world. Your name is going to be known forever. People are going to be talking about you on a Saturday morning. Y'all ain't no joke. Y'all going what I'm not even going. Y'all going to touch that land that we've been talking about for four old years. I'm just letting you know. Y'all ain't nothing to reckon with. Y'all ain't nothing to play with. You intelligent, you're smart, you're wise, you're physically fit because you've been walking for 40 years. <laughs> y'all ain't no joke, don't forget it. That's all I'm trying to tell y'all starting out is look good God Almighty. Anybody been hanging out with God for 40 years straight? <laughs> you, somebody need to pay attention to you. Lord, where was I? I must have flipped the page. All right. Was I reading the right thing? Lord, how much I got excited. <laughs> I must, what I do? Uh-oh, I skipped. I'm supposed to be in seventh chapter. I was wondering, ooh, that thing was so good. My fault. Let's go back. But it's still good. When the Lord your God shall bring you into the land where you're going to possess, it has cast... Okay, now here we go. When the Lord your God... Oh, Lord, have mercy. gave me a peep into to, today's lesson. Oh. When the Lord your God shall bring you into the land where you're going to possess it, it has cast out many nations and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Persians. Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations great and mightier than you. God said, y'all going to a land is, I knew I was somewhere. Oh my God. I mean, I'm excited about today's lesson, but oh, oh God, help me pay attention to where I am. He said, you got seven nations and these people are much stronger than you, greater than you, more, more than you. If it's two million of them, Let's just say this, and this—I don't want none of my opinion. But it, let's just say hypothetically, it's, it's, let's say you you a little over two million. You're going against about ninety million. 
I'm just trying to show the difference between the two. There, that is not the exact number, but I'm trying to show you that the word says, um, seven nations greater and mightier than you. He says, I'm just, I just want to take 10%. And y'all finna go fight 90%. And I'm going to show you what I can do. Just in case in 2020, somebody might not think they, they're big enough when they see something greater than them and say, oh, it's just me. He said, let me show you what I can do with a little when I'm with you. And when the Lord your God shall deliver them before you, uh-oh, he didn't say you might. He said, when I'm, first of all, you are going. And when the Lord your God shall deliver them, all them seven nations before you, you shall smite them. In other words, these folk physically went to war with a lot of people. And God said, you shall smite them. And utterly destroy them. I mean, get rid of all of them. Now, what is God saying to us today? If it's something, you may not be going to a war outside of your domain or your where you live. But there's somebody going to come against you or something in your mind that will come to, against you when you know that that thing is not... It came against you. You know it was not sent from God. Destroy it and utterly destroy it. Even if it's a thought. If it's a thought. And it don't line up with the word. The word said destroy it. If it's the temptation of watching something that you know you want to be delivered from. God said you got the ability to cut it off. If it's something that if you're hanging out with people that's not taking you to your destiny, he said, utterly walk away. Get away from it. Because we're not fighting the wars that they fought. If it's something that you want to say and you just feel like you just want to cuss them out, God said, utterly destroy that thought. Because I'm going to do something in you you're going to realize you're glad you did what I said. And when the Lord your God shall, he said, um, and when the Lord your God shall deliver them from before you, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant. He said, don't, don't, don't hang out with them. Don't agree with them. Let them know I ain't, I ain't about that. That's not, I ain't about that. When the Lord your God shall deliver them before you, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant, no agreement. I ain't with it. Nor show mercy on it. He said, when you get through, don't, don't look back into my, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, he said, mm. if it ain't right, cut it. And don't apologize. When you see something that you got to get rid of, he said, don't dread that. Uh-uh. He said, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why you got to be like that. Because, the, oh, hold on, y'all. This thing trying to fight me this morning. I got to utterly destroy them bugs. He said, I'm going to tell you why. Because you come against the enemy don't care nothing about you. You think the devil going to say, I, 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 I'm sorry I did them. Like, uh-uh. He said, the enemy ain't got you up. You got to look, you got to, you got to be greater than him. You know, there's a guy in the New Testament and he lost his job. And this guy came up with, with something that Jesus had to say. I got to commend this guy. It's because when he lost his job, this guy got on the phone, on the computer, got on the internet, got everywhere, social media, bringing it up to our day. And he said, look, I, I ain't, I'm too proud to beg. So he called all them folks and said, look, y'all, y'all, you know, y'all owe a hundred dollars. Just pay me 60. And I'm just, I mean, I give you the right number, but he was just, I'm going to bring your bill out. He got that guy that owned that stuff and took his stuff and called them folks and said, y'all just pay me. The guy said, shoot, I got to have some money. And guess what Jesus said about that guy? I commend him. Why? Because if he is the devil 
and he works for the enemy. <laughs> this guy don't play. He said, this guy going to do whatever he got to do to make the enemy company stay in, in business. He said, I wish the children of God would do that for me. I wish they would just go beyond and go. It, it, how, why are we letting the enemy's camp do what he does when I wish somebody would go deeper in me and don't care nothing about what folks say? I wish I would have that type of energy for, through people that would work for me. I wish somebody would get in my word and just keep digging and digging and digging and digging and digging. And so he's saying, that, don't pay no attention to something that I told you to let go. Don't have mercy on Now make sure that you understand it's got to be something that, in other words, it's got to be something that you know God said don't have. It's not telling tell you just go chop people off. But if people don't want to line up with the word, cut them. If people don't want to do what the word say, do cut them. Don't apologize. Uh, can I call you tonight? No. And don't look back. Stay with this word. And let's get out. Let's get this. Let's get the best out of God's word. He said, neither shall you make marriages with them. Don't you marry nobody that don't love God? Don't you marry nobody that don't see God? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save him. I know he ain't quite saved. I'm just going to get him just. I just want to be. I know the Lord has given me. God showed me this my husband. God showed me this my wife. I'm going to tell you what the words say. That's just point blank, period. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Don't, don't get entangled with that. Thy daughters shall not, don't you give your daughters unto his sons, nor his daughters shall you take unto your son. Don't you do that. I have lived many days, and I can tell you, you will live a life that you don't like. You think that it ain't going to... I had to be careful because some words come to my head. I'm telling you now, get somebody that loves the word and do the word. And how would, how do we know if a person loves the word? Not because they say it, but how they communicate with other people. Do they go to work on time? Do they keep their word? Do they just grab money at their convenience and then treat you like you know? Child, the words that don't mix yourself up with that. He said, for, he said, I'm going to tell you what they're going to do. This is a guarantee. This is God, the all-knowing. For they will turn away your son from following me. He said, if you do it, if you get somebody not lined up with the word, you're going to be miserable. Why? Because they're going to turn you away from me. Period. Well, karma. That they may serve other gods. He said, you go after somebody else, I declare... Don't do it. He said, because you're going to go out after something that you don't want. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. See, you got to understand, you've been set apart. You've been taught by God. You ain't no joke. You ain't nothing to play with. You set aside. You're distinguished. You're good at what you do. Why are you looking at what? Don't look down. Anything that's not going up is already down. You don't want to go find nobody and mix your... You, do you know... See, I think what the problem is, we don't really know who we are. We don't believe who we are. That's why we settle. What it look like a king out there? What, what, it, what it look like a rich man's son out there eating with pigs? What that look like? What, it, what does it look like that you have been to the best of the schools and you hanging out with people on the street and you got on fine clothes and you trying to mix in with people that... He said, what... What, Jonah, why are you on that boat? Why are you on that ship? You're going to cause the whole ship to go down. You better get yourself off that ship. That's how much God thinks of the people that he has trained. Don't you not know that when you go to God's class, that you're in the highest class, in the highest level on earth? He said, what it look like you come to, walking away from me going down to something that ain't about nothing? I'm trying to build you up. And he said, but if you do I have given you my word and telling you. I, I let you in the CEOs, in the, in the clothes. Uh, I let you in the tap. I, I gave you a word from the tabernacle. I told you secrets that don't nobody know. You you almost like, you, 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 you ain't nothing to reckon with. I gave you information that only private 
You had to be on my team to know what I told you. I'm telling you, get my information, go out there with these folks. You know how they, these folks, you ever had these folks that work for the government? And they let you know the secrets of the government. They said, man, you, I'm telling you something for you to know this. Got to cut you. If you walk out of here with what we just told you, and we just let you know the inside of what we getting ready to do, and you know that you are an agent that works for the, the government, and we just input inside, we checking out everybody you live around to make sure that you're the people that we got our eyes on the people that you got so much protection over you until we can't afford for you to walk out and do something crazy. If you do, you got to go. And this is what the word is saying. He said, I have deposited so much inside of you, you're gonna fire me up. And I'm gonna have to kill, I'm gonna have to kill you. I'm letting you know now, I don't play. But you shall, but you sh but thus shall you deal with them. This is how you're gonna deal with these folk that's coming against me. You shall destroy their altars. He said, you're going into a place. Let me tell you kind of folk you're going to, because I know you get religious. You just ain't supposed to kill people. Let me tell you something. These kind of folk go in classroom, and they, they, they don't think nothing. Take your babies and put them on a hot fire and burn them and think they're pleasing me. He said, you going in some un... You going in some, in some people that would take your head and use it for a bowl to eat cereal. It's, I'm, I'm sending you to some mean folk. I've seen these guys do some of everything. These folk would take an airplane and go into a building and just, just tear it up and think they're doing me a favor. He said, I'm sending you in there with the intelligence that I, the, the, all of the intelligence that I've deposited inside of you. And just I'm, and in fact, I'm letting you know, I'm letting you know what, I'm, they gonna come upon you and you gonna know they're not right. They can't even fool you. I'm putting myself in you. And I don't want nothing, I'm so sick of them folk destroying everything that I created for man and I need somebody to go in there and I need you to wipe them out. He said, but you going to be the one I use, but I'm going to be the one that's doing it. Because I'm going to tell you something about me. You can't handle me. If I was just show up just one thing, if I came down and you saw me, I just my, ain't, I'm trying to keep the earth. And I need y'all to just go for me. You going to come against, don't don't have no mercy on these folk. Because I'm telling you something, they don't care nothing. Them folk will eat your heart. Them folk, with, them folk don't care nothing about nothing. Them folk will cut your foot off and, and laugh at you and, and, and watch you die like it's some, some type of sport. And I'm so sick of it. That's why I raised you up. You got to understand this earth is mine. And I want you to utterly destroy them. And in our 2020, anything that don't line, if you, whatever you see that the word says, he said, utterly destroyed. If it don't, if it's something that you're walking on, watching on TV and it don't line up with God, we well, cut that off. He said, you're a distinguished person. Don't let no, don't. I'm just saying, I'm just letting you know God said, y'all some holy people. He said, but destroy the altars, the thing that they, they burn these kids on and, and just cut up people like it ain't nothing and and break down their images and they got all this stuff all over the place where they, they try to scare you with their, what they're hanging up on the billboard. Cut down what they're growing and burn their graven images with fire. In other words, get rid of them. I'm telling you, I could do it myself. He said, but when I've, I, it's not my time. I got a day when I'm going to move, but right now I need you to go represent me. He said, why? Because you are a holy people unto the Lord, that God, your God. The Lord joke, you've been walking with me 40 years. You ain't no joke. I, if I could just get the believers to know you are no joke. If you, God said, if y'all can see what I see, you'll do what I said. I see people doing some of the craziest things. And after a while, if you don't, if you mix yourself up with them, these folks gonna put something in your drink. I'm telling you, I don't have no mercy on this stuff that ain't right. But you are holy people separated unto the Lord thy God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a special people unto him. 
above all the people that are about the face of the earth. He said, I, 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 the whole earth is looking just like I'm telling you what to destroy. Everybody on earth is a mess. And the last time I got involved, I destroyed the whole earth and told one man. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to spray this stuff. He said, I had to get rid of the whole earth, and I'm trying to keep this earth. I need y'all to go do what I need y'all to do. For you are holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are born on the face of the earth. God, I mean, I, 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 was, I wanted to use anybody, but it was Abraham, and now I'm going to bless his seed, and you are part of that seed that I want to get my job done. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest. He said, I didn't, I didn't, um, please stop. Let me say this right now. Please don't call me. I'm, 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 I'm online. He said, I am going to, see when people do this, somebody on messenger trying to call. I don't even know this person. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You are y'all a little old bit of people. I ain't get y'all because y'all big and numb and boastful. I got you and you tiny. I'm just trying to show the world what I can do with just a little bit. Of, just a little bit. But because the Lord loved you, how did God what did God love? How did God love them? He said, I love you because I showed you who I am. I protected you. I don't just love because I know how to say it, say it or spell it. I love because I make what I say come to pass. I love you. I demonstrated my love. I got rid of people that didn't want to act right. Act right. I told you the secrets. I stayed up with you. I watched you. I told Pharaoh to take his hands off you. I love you. And when I love, I love hard. I'm a jealous God. I know who you are. You, if, you don't, if you ever forget who you are, just think about who I am. I chose you. He said, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, the, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He said, look at what I did to you. I separated you from something that wasn't about nothing. I told that guy to let you go. And I gave him a chance to do it. And then I took you and brought you to myself. You are my prized possession. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God. The faithful God. Have I been faithful to you? which keeps covenants, and I don't I don't make agreements and don't back it up. And mercy, then I forgave you. You said, well, where's the mercy? This is the Old Testament. That you're not consumed. That I didn't stop. That I, I heard you when you complained, which I don't deal with complainers. When I, I saw a lot of stuff y'all did. But I had mercy. And here you are today extended mercy and you're here today to just walk in here. I'm just trying to let you know how you, who you are so when you get in here don't forget. Know therefore that the Lord thy God he is God, the faithful God, always faithful, which keep covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> He said, I love you so much until I bless your family a thousand generations. People will wonder how you still standing when everybody's falling down. Because you love me. You stay with me. And I like it like that. <coughs> and repay them that hate him. He said, let me tell you something. I repay folk. I don't do stuff behind folk back. Verse 10 says, I repay you in your face. That's, how, that's who I am. I'm God. <coughs> <coughs> I 
I sprayed this stuff. <coughs> I can't help. I need some water. He said in verse 10, and he repays them that hate him to his face. Mm. Mm. I got a lot going on. Mm. Lift it. Oh, ooh, all of my teeth. Mm -mm. <laughs> I gotta get this out of my mouth. Mm -mm. Lord have mercy, I can't hardly see. Mm. Mm. Oh, there's a lot going on today. <laughs> And repay, good God Almighty. Sorry, y'all, keeping it real. Repay them that hate him to, to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him. So when I tell you I'm gonna get you, I tell you in your face, I'm gonna get you. That hate him, he will repay him to his face. He ain't doing nothing behind your back. I'm, I'm trying to tell you how to stay on the right side. Or um, I'll meet you. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass if you hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep you the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto your dad. He said, if you, if you stay in my word, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to let people, I'm going to watch, people going to watch you grow. Your business is going to stand. You're going to prosper. You're going to, you, you, let's just let the word say. Him. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your body, your womb, and the fruit of your land, the corn and the wine and the oil, the increase of thy kin and the flocks of thy sheep. And in the land which he swear unto thy father to give you. He said, you stay with me. I got you. I got, I got what you have and what you're going to have already covered. It's like you got a job and the insurance company said, any baby that you have will be protected. All the children that you have, all the children that you're born to have, they're already covered. I'm gonna bless your ground. They gonna everybody yard grass. Anybody don't trust me, grass gonna be dying, and you're gonna be just green. And you shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be a male or female barren among you, all, or among your cattle. He said, if you stay with me, there would not be anything. There ain't no such thing as I can't have no baby. God said, yes, you can. Because why? I got you covered. I know your womb. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases on, of Egypt. The stuff that happened in Egypt, you will never see it, which you know upon thee, but will lay them upon all of them that hate you. He's going to take the sickness off of you and give it to your enemy. It's God protection me in his lipstick this morning and thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver you thine eyes shall have no pity on them neither shall thou serve their gods for they will be a snare unto you he said don't get caught up with them folk he said separate yourself distinguish yourself draw, draw the line draw the line anything that you got to do that's connected to me Preserve it and do it. If you shall say in your heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispose them? You said, don't we ever come in, don't we ever see anything that I said can be done and you feel like you can't do it? You got to go to the <clears throat> go to the classroom. You got to go to a meeting. You got to say something. You say, oh, these people going to fire me. He said, no, no, they're not. I know it. You stand your ground when it's the word of God. You do what you have to do. You do it right. You do it in excellence. And he said, I will have your back. And you ain't got to look at nobody. Ooh, ain't nothing. 
Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shall well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto Egypt. That's why you need to understand why you got to look at the Old Testament so it can encourage you in the new that if I did it once, I'd do it one more time. I'd do it again. Thou shalt not be afraid of them. But shall well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The great temptations which thine eyes saw. And the signs and the wonders. And the mighty hand and the stretched out arm. Whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out. So shall the Lord thy God do unto the people. Of whom you are afraid. He said you ain't got to be scared of nothing. I got this. I just need you to go forth. Moreover the Lord thy God will send the hornets among them. Until they are until they are left and hide themselves from you, be destroyed. He said, I'm going to send, if, I, if you don't get them, I send bugs to get them. I send, I send incest to get them. Anything to try to hide, I'm telling you. What you see, I want you to destroy. And what hides from you, I got it. And the Lord your God will put all those nations before thee, little by little. He said, you got seven, seven nations that's going to come against you. He said, I'm going to take them out little by little. I ain't going to do it all at one time because you can't handle it. I need you to, I need you to grow and I need you to know that I'm going to continuously have your back, little by little. And the Lord your God will put all those nations before thee by little by little. I'm going to get them little by little. Thou may not you may not consume them all at once, lest the beast of the field increase upon you. He said, you go in there trying to kill all of them. He said, no atomic bombs. I ain't no bit blowing it up. He said, because after that, then you got to contend with the beast. He said, so we're just going to get the people out little by little. But the Lord your God shall deliver them into, unto you and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. Anything that comes against you, stand up for my word. I got it. And he shall deliver their kings unto your hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before you until thou have destroyed them. What is God saying to us concerning what he's telling them? We got businesses to start. We got schools that we work at. We have homes. And what he's saying to us is today. How do I live this today? I want you to go in there and be such a good teacher that you destroy every teacher that should not be there by the work that you do. I want you to love and be such a good leader until there will be no question about whether I am your God. I want you to, I want you to be everything that this world needs until they have to take down these gods they're bound down to. I want you to represent me so well. I want you to behave yourself in such a way until it's you tight that you that you you, you, you just, I want you to make it happen. Because the enemies that they're destroying, they're already destroyed. He said, what I need y'all to destroy is them little bit of foxes that's keeping you out, of, stopping you from being all I want you to be. He said, A graven images of their God shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them. He said, I don't want nothing that the enemy got on him. He's going to bring nothing. If the, I don't want none of this stuff. These folk that y'all going to? He said, I don't want that silver and that gold. I don't want that stuff. I don't, I don't want. Don't bring this stuff in my house. Don't bring this stuff in your house the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto you, lest you be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Now we're learning this, and God is saying, what they did to gain that stuff, I don't want you to, to brag about what you got from them. That's not going to promote you. He said, don't bring that stuff. Don't, 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 don't put yourself that you in agreement with something that I'm against. He said, that's an abomination. When I bless you, I want you to know I did it. Neither shall you bring an abomination to your house, lest you be cursed, a cursed thing like it. He said, that thing that you bring to that house from them folk, 
that don't do right, he's going to bring that in there. Lord, help me. But thou shalt utterly detest it. I don't want none of that. You ain't get it right. But you shall utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it. For it is a cursed thing. That was Deuteronomy chapter 7. I don't know what's going on today. From the lipstick to the bugs. I apologize for all of that. But the word of God is saying, I'm just learning. This is what God is saying. He said, when you go in and you separate yourself, you're going to see a lot of stuff. It's going to be attractive. But don't get caught up with it. Because I, you already, you, you, I got you. So you don't need to borrow anything from them, take anything. What I tell you to utterly destroy. That means utterly destroy. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope this video came out over well. I don't even know what's going on. Anyway, I gotta go. I love y'all. Going to chapter 8.